Hi everyone, it's Jonathan from Leica here to talk some more about uh, Cyclone 3DR. So today's video, I want to go over creating surface models, creating contours, and also uh, doing some elevation mapping. So you can see here I've got a point cloud that is VLK to go data, just kind of collected in the woods. Uh, we have some sort of undulating terrain here that'll make kind of a good topo model for us. So one of the nice things about Cyclone 3DR when it comes to surface extraction is that it has uh, a pretty good ground filter that's built into it. So we've got our point cloud loaded in as a point cloud object as a Cloudworks group. We can select it, and we can go to surface modeling here, and then we can select the DTM tool. The DTM tool is going to try to automatically filter out a lot of the vegetation and just find our ground surface. So the way this tool works is we have the option here to adjust the angle at which it's going to, this is going to be considered the max angle at which it's going to create the surface. So for example, in our case here, we probably want something like a 30 degree to 35 degree slope uh, because it's going to try not to create an angle or create any sort of triangles that have a steeper angle than this. So it gives you this nice uh, little diagram here that you can use to determine uh, what, what we're looking at. And you can run this all the way up to 80 degrees if you want, but uh, the caveat with that is if you have you know a steeper angle, it's going to start climbing trees and things like that, and that's not really what we're looking for here. We're looking for just our general surface. So I'm going to set mine to 30 degrees. We have the option here to create or to change the vector. So right now it's Z is one, that's an up direction. So that's what we're looking to do here. We're gonna do an up direction mesh on this. If for some reason we wanted to create like a building facade using this tool, we would change that. We could, we could click this little blue arrow and it would allow us, you can see here, we can see our vector and we can change it. Uh, we might wanna change that to like an X or uh, in this case, we're gonna leave it as a Z. Our extraction grid size controls the uh, actual size of our grid. So the lower we set that number, the more detailed the grid is going to be, or the tighter the spacing is going to be, the higher fidelity of a mesh we're going to get. It's also going to take a little bit longer to generate. So I'm going to leave it at the defaults for the purpose of this exercise. I'm going to leave local steep slopes on. That's for handling things like, uh, say for example, like a curb might be a local steep slope. But uh, in that case as well, you know, if a curb runs for two, three hundred feet, well that's not really local anymore and the algorithm might ignore that. But basically it tries to give it an option to go ahead of the setting that we have set here. So like if we have it set to 30 degrees and there's a slope that's 45 degrees but it's pretty isolated, it might try to create that, that slope for us. And then uh, we have the option for measured points, regular or refined. I'm going to use refined because that's going to allow us to, it's basically going to run two passes over the mesh. Uh, measured points is just going to be based off of actual point cloud points that it picks out here and then regular sampling is going to be like in a grid pattern. Um, I tend, tend to have success with the refined option. And then at the bottom we have the option for points on the ground, points not on the ground, noisy points. So these checkboxes are going to allow us to export the point cloud that's extracted as well. So during this operation it's going to extract points on the ground and then it's going to have all those points that weren't included in points on the ground for that filter. Uh, if we check these boxes on, it'll actually give us that split point cloud. So this is kind of a quick way to filter out your ground points as well. So I'm going to leave that checked. And then once we have all that done, I'm going to hit the preview button and let this run for a minute. All right, so our ground preview is finished here. So one thing I can do is go over on the left and I can turn off say for example points not on the ground so we can see we've got our ground surface uh, we got noise points classified out here that were up in the sky so here's our ground points and then our surface so let me turn off the ground points first you can see that we've got a decent uh, topo surface out of here and we didn't have to do any cleanup we didn't have to go in and trim out any trees or do any vegetation cleanup which is why I like this tool uh, we can go back and sort of QA this surface but for what we're going to do today this is going to be uh, very good for us so I'm going to just say OK to accept that. And the next step that we're going to move on to would be our contour generation. So we've got this surface, and this surface we could actually just export out. So we could select this surface and say File, Export, Selected Objects, and we'll go File to Export here. We have the option to export this, 
as a land XML, which if you're a CAD user, Civil 3D, uh, you can just bring that land XML directly in, or MicroStation, uh, they'll both accept the land XML. In the case of Civil 3D, it'll accept it as a service. But we're going to skip past that for now um, because there's a couple other different ways that we can go about doing that. There's one that I kind of prefer if I don't need the actual surface file. So on the extract tab, once we have a surface generated, we can go to we can select that surface and we can click the tool here under uh, smart extraction or contour lines. So we're under extract contour lines. You can see we get kind of a familiar contour generation preset. So the first uh, parameter we can change is the step. So in this case I might make this two foot contours. Uh, I'll just enter two foot. Our range is going to go all over the whole mesh. If we wanted to we could set a custom range and we could define parameters. So like we could say uh, from this point to this point and it's only going to you know go from negative eight to three feet. Um, in our case, we're just going to do all over. And then you can set a pass through point as well. So what's going to happen by default is it's going to set this to even numbers. So we're going to have even contour numbers generated at each uh, two foot interval. If we have a specific pass through that we set, we can determine, okay, we want a contour line to hit directly right here. So we can, we can click this plus and go in and pick a point and say, okay, at that point, we're going to have uh, a contour, like that's where we want our contour line to be. So then we have our major contour frequency, which is, in this case, we're going to have every five foot. So this is basically two footers with uh, 10 foot majors. We have every, every fifth contour is a major contour. And then we can check this button on to filter out small ones. So if we get like a very small contour that has that the total length of it's less than a meter, this will just not draw that contour. Then we set the colors of our contours. Uh, in this case, we got majors are going to be black. Normal contours are going to be white. Uh, I might actually change this to where majors could be gray, and then normals would be white. Actually, let's do this. Let's do normals gray, majors white, and mesh transparency. That's fine. Uh, let's and let's take a preview and see what we get. Uh, so I lied here on this. Let's change this uh, major contour frequency up to five. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that changes on the fly. So now we've got 10 foot contours. So that's a pretty nice little contour map. I like the way that that looks. So I'll go ahead and say OK. But you see we have a couple other options here. We have an option for DXF or Send To. Uh, if you have AutoCAD installed or Civil 3D, I have Civil 3D installed and open here. I've just got a generic drawing open. If you have that installed with your Cyclone 3DR, you actually have the Send To option here in, uh, available for you. So you can see that uh, 3DR detects my AutoCAD drawing one here. If I click that button, you can see it says successfully sent to AutoCAD. If I go straight into AutoCAD, those contours are already in there for me. So that's a nice little feature that Cyclone 3DR has. Another way you can go about doing that as well is to just select the object. So like, so let's say I just wanted these contours by themselves. I can select them, right click, and then my option for send to is also there. So we've got our contours that are over inside of AutoCAD now. Uh, there's another thing that I'd like to do before we end this video as far as just how we make topo and contours quickly. And that is how to do a, just an elevation heat map. So to do an elevation heat map, that would be on the analysis tab. We select our mesh, and then you see we get this option here for a long direction. So the analysis tab is for doing comparisons most of the time, you know, comparing like a point cloud against a mesh, uh, mesh versus mesh, design files, IFCs, things like that. But we can also just do a comparison along a specific direction. And in our case, if we want to do an elevation map, we would do that comparison against just the z-axis, just straight vertical. So we select our mesh, say a long direction analysis, you can see here it lets us pick the direction. In our case, we want Z positive, and then we just say preview. You can see it applies a heat map and distribution histogram to our mesh. So uh, the way that, that looks already, that looks pretty nice. I mean, I would take that as a DTM and, and make maybe like a, an ortho out of that and create something that I would underlay. 
but the other thing that we can do uh, if we're interested in this is we can edit the color of this uh, uh, color banding. So right now it's just sort of a blended color. Everything's sort of graduated across the, the individual elevation values. We can actually set some presets in here. So there's one called regular centered that I like to use for this. Uh, and you can see that the it's going to set it at zero and we have every three feet. Well, since our contour lines are every two feet, in this case, I might want my color banding to be every two feet. So if we say OK to this, and then we bring our contour lines back on, you can see now we actually have a color band at every contour line. So I kind of like the way that that looks. Uh, it just kind of helps determine, you know, you know that every time the color changes, you've got uh, two feet of difference in there for you. So if you want to edit those colors too, you can always select the object. You can see what, what it does though is it, here's our original ground mesh. Whenever you perform anything on the analysis tab, it actually takes it into a, it creates a copy where it writes this uh, intensity information or, or inspection information into the color channel. So if we want to change the colors of this ground mesh, we go into this color wheel and then we click edit colors and that gets us back to uh, the color editor, if we want to change any of these colors or drag any of these around or change the interval. But yeah, so that's um, that's more or less the way that you would go from taking a point cloud, creating a surface quickly, creating contours, and then doing a quick elevation heat map. Uh, you know, this took us about 12 minutes. So really a nice quick way to generate this kind of data from a point cloud without having to do a whole lot of cleanup. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something, and I'll see you on the next one.